Betty White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. In the life of Elizabeth occurred some time ago. I believe it was the occasion of one of Mama's rare visits to the home of her daughter. Elizabeth! How are you tonight? Moving the furniture again? You're making the den over into a bedroom? Why? <laughs> Mama's coming to visit. Oh, I, I get it. You need the den as a spare room for Mama. Well, why don't you get Alvin to help? Alvin doesn't know? You're going to make the room over and then tell him, is that it? <laughs> oh, honey, that was a wonderful dinner. Just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> now, a few minutes with the crossword puzzle, then we'll watch television together. Uh, Alvin, why don't you go outside and, and do it? <laughs> oh, no, honey, it's a little too chilly out there, besides. Where's the television set? Uh, the, uh, the, the picture tube went off. Honey, it's only been in there two weeks. <laughs> That's what I told the man. He said, lady, the picture tube's gone out. And I said, now, isn't it a little young for that? That's a joke. I figured it out. It's in the living room. How in the world did you get it in the living room? It weighs a ton. I had on a light movie. <laughs> <laughs> Say, speaking of things weighing a ton, how's your mother these days? Mama? Oh, ma Mama's fine. That's good. Hey, you know we do an awful lot of joking about her, but she's really a swell person. Sweetheart, what would you say if, if Mama were to come and visit us for a couple of weeks or... <laughs> well, I'd say swell, except we don't have a spare room. Well, maybe I could arrange something. No, you might as well forget it, honey, because we would... For how long did you say? Oh, with the outside, maybe a couple of so. <laughs> now, I'll try it again. Darling, here I am just chattering away when you're trying to finish your puzzle. Elizabeth, you're I just sweet. Try. You're always so ready to forgive your chatterbox your... wife. Now, you go right back to your puzzle. I want to straighten up around here. <laughs> okay. I may have to yell for help. No, I have a hunch sooner or later you will. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> hey, honey, what's a four-letter word meaning not here? As gone. Gone. <laughs> I need a six-letter word meaning, uh, Disappear. Oh, how about, um, how about vanish? Vanish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alvin, uh, I found the only way to really work a crossword puzzle is to concentrate completely. Don't even look up. What'd you say? <laughs> I said I, I talk too much. Oh, I'm going to really concentrate on this and do it good. Good. <laughs> Must say you're taking it pretty good about your mother. I thought you might try one of your tricks. Alvin. Huh? Hey, what are you doing back there? I can't see you. Just work your puzzle. Oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think we really ought to build a guest room. Look at the overhead. Overhead. Elizabeth, sometimes I think you're off your rocker. The rocker off me? Huh? I said you're not concentrating. Oh, that's right. Seventeen letter word meaning, huh? Seventeen. <laughs> hmm. uh, see if you can move from that chair into this with, without breaking your train of thought. Sure. <laughs> Sweetie, 
Without breaking your train of thought, how would you move a heavy bookcase without asking somebody to help you? I'd get the roller skate Kathy left here on our last visit. Go on. Lift up one end of the bookcase, slide it underneath, and wheel the whole thing out. Thank you. Yeah, like that. Honey, what's a, what's a five-letter word meaning stupid? L. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good so far. It says here that some guy completed one of these things in 10 minutes. Maybe he just wasn't concentrating. Mm, honey, what's a, what's a word for base of mountain? Foot. Foot. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm almost through now. Can you imagine anyone saying that he can work one of these things in 10 minutes? Guy ought to be hanged. Well, whatever you say, dear. Hey, where I am, I'm almost through. So am I. I can't get over anybody saying he can do one of these in ten minutes. That's a lot of funk. It's for Mama. Hmm? <coughs> Can you move over someplace else without breaking your train of thought? I want to straighten up the room a little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll move here in a bit. <laughs> Honey, have you changed the bedroom around? No, I just made it in... Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, it just... Take a little getting used to, that's all. I'll be right back. I'm going at the den for a minute. <laughs> hey, honey, what's a five-letter word meaning shock? Elvin! Honey, what's the matter? I can't find the den. You can't find the den. It was here a minute ago. Elizabeth, this smells like one of your tricks. What do you mean you can't find it? <laughs> While you were concentrating, I, I changed the den into a spare room. Mama's going to pay us a visit. You check. Why? I shall leave you at this point, Elizabeth. Why? She sent a wire. She can't make it. That's why I thought I'd change it into a, into a spare room with it. <laughs> Mama, she can't make it. What do you mean she can't make it? She just can't make it, that's all. Here. <laughs> Dear Elizabeth, I can't make it. By the way, Elizabeth, what's a nine-letter word meaning not too bright? Elizabeth. Thank you. Good night, Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? I've been meaning to talk to you about that in the first place. Elizabeth, <laughs> aren't you ashamed? Thank you. And in just a moment, we'll bring you incident number two in Life with Elizabeth. Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred in the summer of last year. Anyway, it was a swell day for a picnic, and Elizabeth managed to borrow two bicycles from somewhere, and away they went. Nice little scene. We may as well wait right here until Elizabeth and Alvin come gliding up. Alvin? Come on, honey, I think I found a pretty place. Hurry up!
when you put that. Oh, brother. Ah, it was out a few miles that bicycle and you discovered muscles you didn't even know existed. Well, it's not those muscles that bother me. Yeah, I've got to... <laughs> it's pretty out here. Yeah. Elizabeth, why did you get me a bicycle with a front wheel that won't turn? Won't it really? It won't even budge. Look at this. The bearing must be frozen. Maybe if you leave it in the sun for a while, it'll thaw out. <laughs> Elizabeth, when it comes to things mechanical, you're a nudnik. Well, then explain to me how a bear could freeze in weather like this. <laughs> Not a bear, a bearing. It's in here. For the first five miles, this wheel was turning fine. Then somebody forgot to oil it, the bearing got hot, and it froze. It got hot and froze. That's right. <laughs> when we get home, remind me to boil up a few ice cubes. <laughs> anyway, if I can get this wheel off, I think I can fix it. Okay, while you do that, I'll fix lunch. This is huh. breaking my back. How would you like some nice tuna sandwiches? I brought some tuna, mayonnaise, pickles, and iced coffee. Honey, you didn't have to bring any pliers, did you? Oh, uh, well, a bobby pin help? <laughs> don't look at me like that. I don't carry pliers in my hair, you know. You know, this place is absolutely ideal for a picnic. No ants, no flies, no bees, and no rain. Yeah, you just wait. We'll find something that'll make us miserable before the day's over. Oh, and I don't be like that. Honey, I didn't bring much food. I just brought tuna and mayonnaise and pickles and iced coffee. Yeah, well, that's fine. If I just get this wheel off now, everything would be complete. Now, I can't get over it. No ants, no flies, no bees, and no rain. I'll take that bobby pin after all. Oh, now you come running. Hey, by golly, you're right. No ants, no flies, no bees, and no rain. And no bobby pin. Why not? I don't know. I guess they must have jarred loose when I hit that tree back there. Oh, this is a fine kettle of fish. I don't have the kettle, but I do have the fish. I brought tuna, mayonnaise, pickles, and iced coffee. Yeah, that's fine, but I can't enjoy a meal knowing I have to carry this thing back to town. How about that? No ants, no flies, no bees, no rain. Yes, and I have no pliers, no wrench, and no cooperation from you. Well, how did I know the bear was going to freeze? <laughs> Elizabeth, don't you have anything in this basket I can get that wheel off with? No, honey, all I brought was tuna, mayonnaise, pickles, and ice cream. <laughs> Now, do you want to tell me again about the ants and the flies? Well, it's true. No ants, no flies, no bees, and ice cream. Uh, no rain. Well, let's eat. I'll fix the bite later. Good. Hey, that isn't poison oak over there, is it? Mm -mm. Darling, would you get the bread? I think I left it in the other basket. Hey, no bread over here. You sure? Funny. I guess I must have jarred loose when I hit that tree back there. Well, we can spread the tuna on the pickle. Oh, that sounds great. What's this? Oh, you asked if that was poison oak over there. That isn't what this is, so you can tell by the leaves. Oh, got that. <laughs> your mind. Alvin, don't look so horrified. The doctor told us we weren't allergic to poison oak. That's the baby we've got to be careful of. Why? Poison ivy. Look, you can tell the difference between... <laughs> Let's eat. We'll have the botany lesson later. Okay. You open the thermos, okay. and I'll open the pickles. There you are. <laughs> Little iced coffee, Elizabeth? Mm hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth? Hmm? <laughs> Squeeze it. <laughs> Honey, let's face it. You brought the wrong thermos, Joe. I'm sorry. See if you can open the pickles. <laughs> it's no use, I can't open. I would just have to put the tuna on our on the mayonnaise. That ought to be good. See if you can open the mayonnaise. <laughs> 
<laughs> what do they do, weld these things on? <laughs> it's no use, I can't do it. We just spread the tune on our hands. <laughs> oh, what now? I can't find the can opener. Don't tell me. It bounced out when you hit the tree back there. <laughs> Maybe if we punched a hole in the top with a rock, we could drink it through straws. We haven't got any straws. <laughs> I think you've been sitting in the sun a little bit too long. Some picnic. Mm. It's fine. Alvin? Yes? Here come the ants. <laughs> Poor little fellows will starve to death. I've got news for you. The flies and the bees are arriving. There's no rain. Give it time. <laughs> Alvin, I have an idea. Elizabeth, I no longer trust you. I think your brains bounced out when you hit that rock, the tree back there. I'm talking about the tree back there. The, the can opener, the bread, the bobby pin, they're all by that tree and it's only a couple of miles back. By golly, you're right. You're right. Come on. Let's go. I'll get your you right. get the yeah, yeah. You get the and I'll get these things right oh, here. Right. I'll turn this around. Well, we can do this if we just go back and just a little while. Sure we will. The we'll have fun yet, huh? Yeah, well, we just... <laughs> oh, I told you to fall out. And in just a moment, we'll bring you incident number three in Life with Elizabeth. Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred the first time she met Mrs. Skinridge. You may be interested to know that their relationship as neighbors started off very badly and then rapidly deteriorated. <laughs> Rootrot. Rootrot? I could tell clear over from my yard these plants had rootrot. What kind of rootrot? Red. Red rootrot? Red rootrot. <laughs> How do you get rid of red rootrot? Can? Just get rid of the plants. <laughs> would, would you care to sit down, Mrs. Uh, Skinridge? Chloe Skinridge. I'm your neighbor from the other side, Elizabeth. Uh, where's Alvin? Oh, he's in the house. How did you know his name? I am what is known as a nosy neighbor. <laughs> well, you're certainly frank about it. No point in being any other way. People say I talk funny. Isn't true. I talk a lot. Well, now, why in the world would they say you talk funny? I haven't the least idea. Oh, well, can I help you empty the thrash? The thrash? <laughs> yes, the thrash is the waste paper basket here. Oh, this thrash! Uh -huh. <laughs> I can get it. I'll be right back. All right. Oh, this is a nice suit of furniture you have, Elizabeth. <laughs> when the movers was carrying it in, I thought it was raw iron. <laughs> you thought it was what? Raw iron. It's just the right height. <laughs> Do you mind if I make a joke on that? <laughs> I'm always making up jokes. <laughs> Don't tell me you have a sense of humor. You too? Oh, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Me too. I'm... Why, only last night I said to Pierre, I hope to goodness that girl Elizabeth has a sense of humor, I said. I was wrenching out some of his clothes at the time. <laughs> I turned to him and I said, I may be a nosy neighbor, but I'll say one thing for me. I'm a funny nosy neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> now you go on. You tell me the joke. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot it. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the Roth Iron furniture. <laughs> oh, yes, well, it, 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 it isn't funny now. Go on, tell it anyway. <laughs> no, it takes too much build-up. Go on, tell it anyway. Well, you were just saying about the, the Roth iron, and I was going to say that I didn't know Mr. Roth made iron. <laughs> Go on, tell it anyway. <laughs> oh, hello, Alvin. How do you do? Alvin, and this is Mrs. Skinridge. She, she lives next door. She came over to kind of... She... Uh, <clears throat> hmm, where, where do you want me to put the paper? 
Why don't you put them in the trash can? Yeah, okay, I will. What? You heard her. Over there by the palm tree. <laughs> Instead, I think I'll put them over by the palm tree in the trash can. <laughs> Elizabeth. What part of the country is he from? His accent is fantastic. <laughs> well, he spent quite a bit of time in Detroit. <laughs> and who's been tearing up the plants? Mrs. Skinridge, honey, she says they have not root. Root rot. Root rot. They also have scale stem. Yes. See that? They break off like that because they belong to the Begonia family. Maybe we ought to give them back. <laughs> See how brittle they are? No, I didn't mean that. I mean, you said the Begonia family, and I... I Elizabeth, she doesn't mean people. She means plants. Et tu, Brutus? My land, you both have an accent. <laughs> Elizabeth, do you want her to think we're stupid? It isn't et, it's eaten. I'll remember that, darling. Yeah. Have you eaten too, Brutus? <laughs> <laughs> That'll come in real handy if I meet a fellow named Brutus who hasn't had lunch. Sure it will. <laughs> Alvin. What, Ruth? Hmm? You're teasing me. I'm freezing you here. <laughs> now tell me about Rot Root Annie. Well, sweetie, she, she has no sense of humor and she's a fantastic, a uh, fantastic <laughs> gossip. How do you know she's a gossip? Well, she seems to be proud of it. She knew my name as well as yours. When I came out, she was poking around in the plant. Yoo-hoo, I'm back. I've been looking through your trash can. You can find out a lot about people that way. Almost as good as a party line. Boy, are we gonna lead a life. Don't let her bother well, honey, me. She doesn't do any good to whisper. I also read lips. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Skimmage, why don't you sit down and tell us about yourself? Yeah. Well, everybody calls me Chloe, but my real name is Chlorine. Chlorine? <laughs> oh, but you changed it because they kept throwing you in the pool. <laughs> oh, we didn't have a pool, no. Why, well, even as a child, I loved to gossip. So Papa bought me a telescope when I was nine. Or was it thin? <laughs> you spy on people? All day. Except when I practice my saxophone, of course. Saxophone, though, naturally. I knew I was going to like you folks. The minute I washed Elizabeth's face, you washed my face. <laughs> when Alvin kissed you goodbye, I washed your face. Got a net. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you scared me for a minute. <laughs> he, she washed my face through the, thelos the telescope. Uh, got two nets. <laughs> she washed my face, and, and then she washed you get in the car, and, and we both washed you drive away. Then I went right into the house and exploded some breakfast food. I went right into the house and exploded. <laughs> Don't look like that. I always explode my own breakfast food. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, just a second. What time is Oh, my land, it's time to take my Cuba lesson. <laughs> Mrs. Skinridge. Mrs. Skinridge, why are you deliberately trying to make yourself obnoxious? These plants definitely have root rot. Are you hoping we'll move away? They have stale stem, too. Hey, she's pretending to be a stinker, so we'll move away. Welcome to the party, Alvin. Well, Mrs. Skinridge? I have a little dog, and he barks. So what? Not so what, Alvin. It's, it's what difference does that make? So what, Mrs. <laughs> what about the little dog, Mrs. Skinridge? Well, the last people that lived here kept reporting him as a nuisance. I thought you might do the same. Oh, oh that's no problem. Uh, listen, just a moment. Humphrey! Here, boy! Humphrey! Humphrey! <laughs> Mrs. Skinridge. Storm! Stormy! My <laughs> <laughs> land, we've got to get these plants back in the ground. Today. Why? Why, there's no such thing as root rot. Really? <laughs> Or stale stem. Well, I I not you 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 you
thought you might like to know that Elizabeth and Alvin and Mrs. Skinridge all finally got back on the right track. <laughs> Please be with us again next time, will you? Until then, once more, goodbye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.